So thank you everyone for coming out to this Tuesday weekly talk with Austin Pantsner. Um, for those of you that don't know him, I'll just mention again, he's a doctoral trombone student here at Jacobs, and he has an amazing project called The Functional Musician, which is designed to really um, target musicians' needs for health and wellness and injury prevention. And we've just been really lucky to have him with us for these weekly talks. And for those of you that have been coming regularly, it's a really good way for us to check in with ourselves about how we're doing physically and even mentally too. So it's been really helpful. And uh, I think we're gonna talk about burnout today. So Austin, when you're ready, you can take it away. Fantastic, thank you Elizabeth for that wonderful introduction. It's really a pleasure to be here and I'm excited to talk about a topic that unfortunately I have experienced many times in my post-secondary uh, academic career. So um, today we're gonna to talk about burnout and this is the fifth week of the six week program that um, I created to adapt, change, and grow during this COVID-19 situation. So just a little bit about myself for people who um, aren't familiar with me. I've been pursuing health and wellness for the past three years. I hold certification in personal training, corrective exercise, and nutrition coaching. And this all, I've always loved physical fitness and nutrition, but this all stemmed from several different performance-related injuries that I developed over the years. I first blew out my forearm when I switched to bass trombone, and that led to a shoulder injury and eventually led to a back injury. So um, during the course of this time, many doctors told me I needed to quit or take some rest. And when you're in the swing of graduate school, when you have a lot of performing demands, that's not always possible. And I was paying um, a lot of money to be at an institution such as IU, and um, I wasn't willing to sacrifice and take rest when I had a chance to perform in um, some very fun ensembles and opportunities. So that led me to these certifications and it also helped me overcome my injuries and find ways to implement certain habits into my life to help prevent the injuries and help me um, practice as much as I want to. So that led me to create The Functional Musician. Uh, the Functional Musician is an online health and wellness brand dedicated to helping collegiate musicians uh, integrate sustainable health and wellness habits into their life. If you look on our Instagram page, The Function of Musician, we offer mobility, workouts, and nutrition tips, and we upload that daily. We also just uh, released a 30-day wellness challenge yesterday, and that is going to start a week from yesterday, so on May 4th, and I encourage everybody who wants more information on that to go to thefunctionalmusician.com slash challenge. So, um, unfortunately, I've had some many uh, opportunities to uh, <laughs> deal with burnout. I experienced three major burnout points in my life. One time in my undergraduate degree, one time in my master's degree, and the biggest one happening during the second year of my doctoral degree. The first two times weren't as severe, and they were at the end of the semester, so I was able to plan some recovery time right after that. But during my doctoral degree, um, it was in the middle of fall semester, um, I was ready to go, and then all of a sudden, um, I woke up, I was so burnt out, and I was questioning um, not only being in school, but really my passion for music. Every time I listened to music, the passion wasn't there, I wasn't really listening, and it, is, it's, it was the last thing I wanted to do. And um, if you, you know, your whole life is your musical identity or an identity of yourself, that can lead to some very destructive and some very negative feelings. So. Um, naturally, that caused me to isolate myself. I was confused, and it led to a, almost like a mini depression, and that wasn't, um, you know, classified by a psychiatrist or a doctor, but um, I had all the symptoms, and it lasted um, about three months. So basically what I did was in December, I felt this burnout. Um, I basically took, I was able to take about six weeks um, kind of like a mental reset. I didn't take six weeks off the horn, but I took as much time as I could. And um, due to that kind of recovery period and strategizing how I would do that, I was able to kind of bounce back, push through the rest of the semester, and then over the summer really recover, um, grow mentally stronger, and get over um, that serious burnout. And I'm so glad I did because I was just like, if you talk to all my friends, I was just a toothpick drop away from dropping out of school and just changing careers altogether. So um, I was trying to find a quote that kind of like uh, was symbolic of what I went through. And this is the closest I could come up with. Uh, maturity does not come with growth. 
It's most times a function of perfecting that balance between struggles in life and learning to be yourself regardless of life, what life throws at you. And I went ahead and I bolded um, two, little, uh, two little phrases in there that I think really sum up um, how to prevent burnout. And that is balance and learning to be yourself. And learning to be yourself can go in so many different ways, but learning to listen to yourself, being aware and knowing who you are goes a long way in um, listening to your needs and achieving that balance between that life and that struggle. So what exactly is burnout? Well, I'm not a doctor, I am not a psychologist, although my dad is a psychologist, and nor am I prescribed in any kind of medicinal um, area. But for me, burnout is the loss of passion, the loss of drive, the loss of centeredness, or the loss of fulfillment in your work or your life. So this is basically caused by the accumulation of stress without proper care habits. And we're gonna talk about those care habits and how stress affects us later in this presentation. And if we don't deal with burnout, it can lead to a negative life altering circumstances and mindsets, just like I experienced, um, such as lo uh, losing your love for your work, your hobby, your life, or even your partner or your family. And that's not something we want to do. So this is something um, I kind of made up on my own. It, it made sense to me for how my mind works. But basically I put burnout on a scale. And really, if you look at it, I put stress on a scale. So on a scale of one to 10, one being happy, carefree, and achieving productivity, basically being the person you want to be, and 10 being full induced burnout with lack of motivation, lack of desire, lack, lack of passion, you don't want to do anything, we can kind of check in with ourselves and see where we're at. If you notice, there are five stages here. We start happy and carefree. Um, we move to the onset of stress, and stress is actually healthy um, in certain amount of doses if we know how to manage it. But it's the continuation of stress, or four to six on the scale, to chronic stress, which is stress with no rest at all um, over the long term. And that leads to the full induced burnout that we want to avoid. And knowing where you're at on the scale is going to help you in the long run figure out um, exact, you know, where you are, how to adjust, and uh, where to go accordingly. So by offering ourselves a visual representation to associate us with the burnout, we can help ourselves check in quicker. And by knowing where we're at on a scale, like I just said, we can adjust our lives accordingly to help manage future burnouts. So uh, here's some early warning signs, okay? So we start with the onset of stress and these less severe symptoms could occur between onset of stress to the continuation of stress. And um, I'm sure we're familiar with a lot of these just because life throws a lot of curveballs at us and maybe it's not always associated with stress, but uh, we have lower productivity, we have lack of motivation, uh, we have lack of wanting social interaction. And I want to clarify that this isn't decompression at the end of the day, this isn't wanting to get your alone time, this is um, feeling like you don't want to communicate with anyone, you wanna lock yourself in your room for um, an extended, you know, a long, an unhealthy amount of time, like 24 hours or something. So along those lines, um, that goes with the, that goes with avoidance of decision making or procrastination. Of course, anxiety, change in habit, uh, appetite, and mental or physical fatigue. These are all things that can occur simultaneously. These are all things that could not occur even during continuation of stress. Just like with the flu, there are several different symptoms. One may show up or all of them may show up, right? Everybody's different and everybody has different personal needs. So let's go ahead and look at the chronic to severe symptoms, okay? So when we go from continuation of stress to chronic stress, um, before we uh, reach burnout, we're going to experience chronic fatigue, especially mental fatigue. You're gonna feel like your physical fatigue is also wearing down your body is actually gonna become less resistant to pathogens. So you may get sick more often. And this is usually due to a lack of mental and physical health and wellness needs. Um, there are certain habits that um, I help clients incorporate into their life, certain fundamental habits. And one of them is regular exercise, nutrition, and proper sleep. If you start neglecting any one of those three, regardless of whether you're in the chronic stress phase or continuation of stress or wherever, wherever you are on the scale, you're actually opening yourself up um, to be more or less resistant to these pathogens so you can get sick um, 
very quickly. Other things that we want to just kind of be aware of is the negative attitudes, resentfulness, apathy, cynical attitude, decreased sexual desire, any kind of attitude that's not normally yourself um, is a big sign that the stress is negatively affecting your life. And I think the biggest one, this is what I started to develop like um, probably two to three weeks leading up to the point where I was like boom, full on burnout was this developing of an escapist mentality. I was like, well, you know, if I get sick, I don't have to go to class. If um, I injure myself, I don't have to play trombone kind of thing. And those are very, you're basically talking about, in my case, I was talking about um, almost injuring myself in a way to avoid my obligations. And by injuring, I mean, you know, opening yourself up to sickness, I would, I would argue that is injuring, um, you know, get it working out until I do develop a perform performance related injury, which I vowed never to do again. Um, but that would be injuring yourself as well. And that's not something that's not healthy. It's not sustainable long term. And that is a sign um, of severe chronic stress. So some things we want to consider. The theme of the last five weeks is everybody is different. Everybody experiences life differently. And it's really up to you to kind of gauge um, how things are going. We really want to develop this awareness of ourself because the beauty about being human and having a consciousness is that we all experience what we experience in our own special way. We all grew up in different social economical situations, experienced different life events, and have created this world through our own mind. So going back to a couple slides ago, with that said, knowing where you stand on the burnout scale is half the battle. Without that awareness, we're setting ourselves up for burnout, if not now, somewhere down the future. Okay, so last thing I want to say again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not prescribing things, but these are strategies that I've read um, that we can put in place to kind of self-medicate in a way to help us avoid this. So uh, we talked about the most important factor, awareness. Let's talk about this equation, equation, <laughs> equation, stress plus rest equals growth. This equation played a huge role in my recovery and still plays a huge role in my life today as it helps me achieve sustainable growth over the long term. Okay, so I took this from Peak Performance, it's written by Brad Stolberg and Steve Magnus. And basically what they said is you can have periods of peak stress, but if you don't have the right amount of adequate rest, remember that everybody's different and they experience that in different ways, um, you are not going to achieve sustainable growth. And there was another equation in the equation in there that I could not, um, that I did not find, but basically it's stress plus zero rest um, equals burnout. And that's exactly the equation that I want you guys to take away from um, this workshop, okay? So to achieve balance in our lives and help our mind recover and grow stronger, keeping this equation in mind is going to be the forefront of our, um, of our theme for today. So here's some daily habits to promote recovery. If you're experience, if you're on the scale and you have an onset of stress or you're experienced chronic stress or whether you're burnt out, it's always the daily habits um, that kind of elevate the stress to abnormal levels. So if you're neglecting your nutrition, if you're eating a lot of fried food, if you're not eating well-balanced meal, meals, if you're overeating in order to um, kind of self-medicate your feelings, or even if you're not eating a lot because um, of a lot of underlying issues, but uh, that's going to negatively affect uh, your well-being. Daily fitness, daily movements, regular exercise plays a key role in that as well. Doing some kind of activity every day to develop um, a level of mindfulness. This could be meditation. This could be a gratitude journal. We talked about this in week one. Feel free to go back and check that if you'd like more information. And the most important habit, the most important fundamental is rest. If we don't get adequate amounts of sleep, um, our function holistically from a physical, mental, and soul level all go down. They do not perform at their optimum level. So um, whenever someone is experiencing an abnormal level of stress, always, if you prioritize these four things, I guarantee you this is going to help you fight through that stress and reach the end of that period of stress. So you can go into that recovery time feeling like, Active, like it's an active recovery rather than a reactive recovery. And I can touch about more about the difference between those two things um, in a little bit. So these are just, so the um, following are just some other habits that are really, really great for us. 
but don't measure up to the level of those four fundamental habits, but they're still really, really important. So I want to talk about daily decompression time, especially at the end of the day. If you have a day where you are very, very productive, if you are working very hard, if you are going from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. kind of days, and as a music student, I've had hundreds of those, and I'm sure other music students listening to this can relate. But if you don't plan the daily decompression time into your schedule, you're almost going to train your mind and train your body to want to be productive at that end of the day, even though your body or your mind may be telling you, hey, I really need this rest. I really need to recover. And this is the trap we fall into because of the society that we live in today. We live in a very um, work hard, um, grind it out until you reach the top kind of attitude. But if we take a step back um, and ask ourselves, is that sustainable? I would argue no. That's why a lot of people drop out of music school because of this mentality, because of this mindset that society has ingrained in us. So uh, by making the time to plan the decompression time into our daily schedule, we are prioritizing you or prioritizing me or us. Um, and you're making it an important thing in your daily life. And it's gonna hold you accountable um, in the long term. So just some guidelines for this daily decompression time. We want to turn off our default mode network. And for those of you that missed the first presentation about mindfulness, the default mode network is based, if you imagine your brain as your phone and you had 30 apps at one time, constantly spewing notifications at you, that's like what your default network is. That's when your brain is constantly running and all these different areas are simultaneously uh, working. So by shutting off your default mode network, we're actually able to slow our brain down slower thoughts and if one of those negative thoughts or something comes in your mind and you really don't want to think about it you actually have the power to grab that thought grab thought grab that thought and flick it away or just forget about it let it pass and that is a huge skill that is essential for that decompression time because if you're constantly thinking about work if you're constantly thinking about how you can up your game or up your practicing um, you're actually working and that's going to take away from your willpower and it's going to add to the stress and because you're not decompressing that's going to add that's going to compress that amount of stress into a short period of time where it blows up into um it goes into another level on that scale uh, so something to keep in mind we also want to avoid social media time uh, i did not say now if you noticed i didn't say avoid screen time because if you look below um, i do promote mindless television Video games is a great way to relax as it promotes creativity, depending on the game you can play. And it also promotes a sense of mind, mindlessness that can promote uh, relaxation. Uh, you can also take up a new hobby, journal. Uh, I don't like exercising before I go to bed, but I know some of my friends who absolutely can't sleep unless they exercise right before they go to bed. So um, that is their, that is why I put that there. So something to think about. So. Here's some other habits that uh, I thought were really, really useful as well. If you're feeling overwhelmed and you can't turn off your mind, what helps me is I write down the most important task, tasks you have to complete by today or by tomorrow, depending on what your obligations are, and you use the rest of the time to judge your energy level and, and decide how you can strategically allocate your time. For example, um, if you have three things to do but they're not due tomorrow, but you're feeling really, really burnt out because the last three days you've been going for eight to 10 hours a day of, product, of productive um, work, perhaps even more, maybe you could use that time to strategically rest after those three intense days. So that way, when you go to your obligations or things you have to fulfill tomorrow, you can do that to your full capacity and you can do that to the best of your ability. And that's going to take you farther than if you were just grinding it out, okay? Um, Another thing we can do, if you find yourself in a very stressed state due to a very packed and tight schedule, is there anything you can reschedule? For example, if you're going out, uh, if you have drinks planned with your friends at night, you know they're your friends. If you're feeling a little bit stressed and you need a little bit of you time, if you're just honest with them, um, unless you bailed on them like 20 times before that, they're probably going to understand, okay? I mean, our mental health and our physical health and you being in control of yourself is the most important thing in all of this. The last thing I want to talk about, I know this is a lot of information, please bear with me. This is the last thing 
um, set your intention before an activity or obligation. And this applies to between obligations as well. For example, um, I just finished my warm up slash fundamental session in the morning and I gotta go straight to class. Well, if I go straight to class, I'm not gonna be focused. My mind maybe not, will not be as open as it could be and I probably won't learn as much. And that's, that's the um, trend that I experienced. So um, I started setting my intention. So I give myself, I uh, go to my warm up about five to 10 minutes early so I could end five to 10 minutes early. And just for a couple minutes in between those activities, I would set my intention um, for the class. And I'd, and I'd always use three words. So I'd use something like, I'm gonna be positive, I'm gonna be open, and I'm gonna go in with a growth mindset. And just by telling yourself that a couple of times before each of your activities, you're setting yourself up to live in the moment, you're setting yourself up to have a growth mindset because you're going to be more open to other ideas and growth. And number three, you're gonna be able to focus longer because you have intention. But if you go in there and you're just winging it, you're coasting, you're kind of seeing what it, you know, life is giving you, um, there is a time and a place for that. But if you're really going in to learn or you're really going in and want to make an impact and want to be your uh, most centered self, setting your intention before an activity or obligation uh, plays a huge role in that. So I encourage everybody to just experiment with that. Before this presentation today, I said I wanted to be engaging. I wanted to um, be positive, And I wanted to also have an open mind in case any questions came my way. So uh, now we're, we're heading to the end of this. We have about seven minutes left. Using the chat feature, I want everybody to share some habits they have, that have helped them avoid burnout or perhaps power through a stressful time. And as they're writing, I just wanted to clarify on one thing that I perhaps uh, overlooked earlier. Um, it's the period of stress. If, like we're heading to the end of the semester. If you're starting to experience stress now um, with one to two weeks left in the school, um, there's a good chance that you won't achieve burnout by the end um, of that school year. You, we can uh, have period, short periods of very, very intense stress, but when we try to prolong that same level of activity, engagement, and stress over the long term, that's when the burnout scale starts to come into effect. So I'm not saying stress is bad, nor am I saying um, that we should avoid stress, but having these strategies and just being aware of how that is applicable um, to our schedule, looking ahead, um, that's going to play a huge role in, in kind of just preventing and knowing how burnout plays a role in your life. So as people um, come in on the chat, this would be a great time um, for questions. Does anybody have any questions um, about burnout or perhaps wanted to share something um, related to burnout? Ah, um, looks like Clo West said, getting outside and moving if only for a short amount of time. Yes, movement is one of those daily fundamental habits that can really help prevent burnout. Not pressuring myself to feel a certain way, that great, that plays a role in mindfulness. Prioritizing self-care also um, prioritizes those four daily habits and plays a huge role. I find doing new hobbies helps. Something I am good at that is not music. That's fantastic. I love that because when we step away from music or step away from some kind of skill that we're so invested in, we're able to actually let our brain process the events that took place or process the practices or just process the last couple of weeks. And when you go back to that hobby after some rest and recovery or time off, um, you're actually going to improve drastically. You're going to find that things maybe were working that wouldn't, that wouldn't be working before you took that break. So that's pretty exciting. Thank you everybody for sharing. Um, if no one else has any questions, I'm just gonna wait about 10, 15 seconds. If no one has any questions, then I think this might be a good time to um, call it a day. So thank you everybody for coming out. Next week, we're gonna be talking about something uh, that I'm very excited to talk about. It's five essential concepts to prevent performance related injury and um, you can check it out actually on the functionalmusician.com slash challenge. 
I'm presenting a 30 day wellness challenge where you can win a ton of mu musician health and wellness prizes as well as the cash prize. And basically it's a full month holistic workout program that has these five essential concepts um, integrated into the programming. And this is all designed to prevent performance related injury and help you perform um, for the remainder of your career. So if you're interested and want more information, please go check that out. And if you'd like to uh, check out any of the other weeks or presentations that we went over, they're all on the Project Jumpstart event page, page under Tuesday Talks. So thank you again for coming out. Don't forget next week, five essential concepts to prevent performance related injuries. I hope to see you guys all there. Very excited about that. And I hope everybody has a fantastic Tuesday. Please stay safe, please stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.